Thank you very much. Um, we have few here, but anyway, because today is Sunday, so maybe more people are here will come in. And my name is Matthias Akazwa, and I'm a student here at the ICD. And I'm, st I'm studying Cyprus. I'm doing my master's degree in Cyprus and international relations. And I'll be presenting about national about the National Institute for Cultural Diplomacy and Orientation in Nigeria. You know, we always talk about, we always, when we talk about Africa, we always emphasize on what is not there and what they're not doing. You know, especially in Nigeria, we always say they're not doing this, they're not doing that, the government is not doing this. So I looked into it and I, I chose this uh, institute uh, as a case study of what they are doing, what they're trying to do. You know, when we talk and talk and go to conferences and talk about problems and they, do not, they are not applying it, so it doesn't work. There's not, no changes. So, but this institute now took the challenge to, you know, implement the changes. So I'll be, talking, I'll be uh, highlighting a few things that they are doing in, in Nigeria as a president. So to begin with, um, I'll quickly introduce, um, give an introduction about the institute. And the National Institute for Cultural Orientation was established by Act of 1993, which their primary uh, responsibility of harnessing cultural resources to meet challenges of social integration, peace, unity, and national development. It also served as a vital force for promoting Nigerian programs for cultural diplomacy and energizing the various cultural establishment the new direction advoca advocated by Nigerian culture policy and the World Decade for Cultural Development, 1998 to 1999, 1988 to 1999, declared by the United Nations. Well, um, you know, as a Nigerian, you guys, did any, have anybody been to Nigeria or know where Nigeria is located? No. <laughs> okay, so let me give you a brief history about Nigeria. So to begin with, Nigeria is, um, as a nation, we proud ourselves uh, with some rationalization that we are, united, we are united in our diversity. And that the diversity is one of the main pillars of our strength. The unity... The unity now known as Nigeria today, according to the world facts, Nigeria is an African most populous country, one third larger than Texas, and is situated off the Gulf of Guinea in West Africa, and its neighboring countries are Benin, Niger, Cameroon, Chad, and the lower uh, coast of the Niger River flows south through the western part of the country in the Gulf of Guinea, swamp and mangrove forest border the southern coast, inland and outward forests. So there are more than 500 languages in Nigeria and more than 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria. The following are the most popular political influential, influential uh, ethnic groups, which are Hausa and Fulani, and 29%. And Yoruba, which is which are twenty one percent, Igbos eighteen percent, and Ijaws ten percent, and Kanuri four percent, Ibibio three point five percent, and Tiv two point five percent. And there are some about these seven languages are the most popular ones in Nigeria. Also, English is considered as the, um, the official language, and However, it is prominent that no more than 50% of Nigerians speak English. So every tribe has got its own language, and that's why we have more than 500. So, and the, the communicate, and the, we have the mode of communication, which is, we, apart from English, is called broken English, which everybody understands and is easier to communicate with each other. And 50% of the population are Christian, and 
40% are Muslim, and indigenous believe of 10%. So the estimated population of the country is about 174 million. So Nigeria is a multi-party government transiting from military civilian uh, rule in 1999, before there was a military uh, rule. So in 1999, we, we, we translate from military rule to democratic country. So, and Nigeria is a mixed income economy, emerging market, with expanding financial service communication and entertainment sector. It's ranked like uh, 30, the 30th to 40 in 2005 and 52 in 2000 in the world terms with uh, GDP as of 2012, and second largest within Africa. On track, it's becoming one of the 20th largest economy in the world by 2020. So, and we have so many cultures. So this, there are different variety of culture and Nigeria, we pride ourselves for our clothing and language and dance. And the, com the common, what is, what is the common uh, in dressing style and the conservative that we, Nigeria, we all were, were more of conservative people. We dress more with big, clothes, big clothing, so when we look at um, the Western clothing, it's disrespectful to the community when you dress very body revealing clothes, clothing. So, beside that, um, we all know uh, culture is a total way of life and in the social organization. This include language, marriage, dance, and so on. So in an intergenous society like Nigeria, dressing is like many other cultural traits. And this has taken it in the different dimension in Nigerian culture as our culture is like, it is dated back over 200 years. And what makes it stand out is our diversity. We always see diversity in Nigeria because, well, what do we mean by diversity? Um, I'll come, back, I'll come back with that in, the, in a bit. So, if you go to if you go to Nigeria, um, we don't believe at other cultures. We we don't trust with each other. The fact, um, but we see outside the world, we they know us. Ourselves. We are diverse, and yes, we are diverse. But in within, we don't trust ourselves. It's hardly for me to say, oh, because I'm from the middle, I don't trust an evil person. I can be a friend with him now, but in what I know, I don't trust him because he is not good. And that, this, that, this is the stereotype that we have in, in Nigeria. And in the north, we consider them, uh, because they are Fulanis and houses, so we consider them as they are uneducated, they are illiterate. But to, to define what is illiterate, um, illiterate is, for me, is, is the ability to read and write. So, and in the north, they can read and write in their own languages. They can read, they, they write in Arabic, and they can write in the, in the local languages. So for me, I don't consider them as illiterate. But if illiteracy is only about reading English or German that makes you illiterate, that means I think 80% of the world should be called illiterate, <laughs> you'll be illiterate because other countries don't speak English either. So it doesn't mean, I, I would, would you say that they're illiterate? No. So, but because Nigeria is, we have different diversity, different groups and different culture and different languages. So and when you cannot speak English or can't write English, they consider you as an illiterate, which is not good. So, and because of this, has, it, has make, it has make Nigeria to separate. The separation was there before, but because of this cultural group and mistrust in cultural differences and this, this separation. And the country, again, is separated into three ge uh, geographical groups, uh, re region, uh, the south, the southeast, the southwest, so if you, and the north. So when you go to the north, you find the Fulanis and the Hausa, which are the Muslims. And when you go to the southeast, you find the uh, Igbos and the Ijaws. And when you go to the uh, west, and you find the, the Yorubas. So this is how the country is, is mixed. And 
because of this, this is so much violence and so much mistrust and so many things happen in Nigeria. And if you, if you hear anything about Nigeria, you don't hear anything good that, that comes to the But Believe me, there are very good things in Nigeria. And there was a conference um, tackling these problems because this, there are always violence in Nigeria from one ethnic group to another. And it has been going on for so long time. You know, what, since I was born, I've, it's, every year it is from one crisis to another and from one ethnic group to another. If this one is not fighting because of property, they're fighting because of land, they're fighting because of the law to change the Muslim or the Christian. So it's very complicated <laughs> and diverse. But despite these problems, we still, sometimes we still come together, which um, we have, uh, this is traditional in our culture, especially most Nigerian cultures, we, ha we have this celebration of dancing, wearing masquerade. So the, the, the Nigerian, the Nigerian government make some uh, gathering. They made a location to, for a um, festival to bring all Nigerians together. So in all year round, there are festivals within like four or five festivals in the country, which bring all the cultures together. Um, in each state, because the country has 36 states and the, the, the federal capital, which makes it 37. So in each state, they host, they host carnivals or, or festivals, and which bring different and, and ethnic groups together to, you know, to celebrate Nigeria, to mix and try to understand each other. So but within this, after this festival, everybody goes on his way, and we, we continue to live <laughs> and mistrust each one another. So how can we, how can this trust be, be, be broken? I think, and that's what the NGA is trying to do because the, this new administration, the Jonathan has been doing a lot concerning this cultural, uh, culture, cultural thing. Not because the Nigerian government don't listen, because we use, we talk and we talk, and now the new, this new government decide to listen. So they, they listen and they know the problem. So, but the, the problem is not just now to solve it. This problem has been there for over 200 years. So the few steps they are taking to resolve, to you know, make Nigeria maybe a better place to live or bring Nigerians together to trust each other. Trust is the most important thing. When a country has one language, they trust each other. You know? But when you have different languages, you, you tend not to trust. Because if you look at other countries that like Germany now, you only, they only speak German. Most countries speak one language, so they make things are more easier. But in Nigeria, we see there are so many languages, so you don't trust. Maybe if you're sitting with somebody and he's speaking his own language, you, you be, if you don't understand it, you will not trust this person. You think he's saying something different. So that's the problem. So the institute now make, um, create a course, a program, which they'll be learning languages. So each, each uh, because in Nigeria they don't have um, cultural, they don't teach, they don't usually teach culture in, in schools, in, in the secondary schools or in high schools. They, so this, yeah, the institute introduced this uh, learning different languages. So if you're from the north, you can learn, if you can learn in the Hausa in the schools and they have implemented it and it's, it's working now. And the project that they're doing, they have different, this project, different parts of the world. You know, in Germany, if you, a country like Nigeria needs to have these things, so that you can, this arena, so that you can go and learn other languages. You know, even German here, some people in, in Germany, other countries, they have this. If you want to learn the language, you learn. But in Africa, we don't. We don't have this stuff, sort of institutes. But because, and we have so many uh, uh, ethnic groups, it mustn't be like international, but within Africa, we can have this, um, uh, this language schools for people that are interested to learn, to be able to help, to communicate. When you learn a language, it's more easier to do business or to trust somebody. So they are implemented this in, in schools, and they, they make competition in languages, and also in the, in, the under, in the secondary school, in the lower level. And because of 
this in Dr. Vela and have promised to be to be broadcasting all their all their um, their programs that they are doing now. So, the, one of the conferences that the the the, the presented, the hosted, that the institute hosted uh, was about an, an annual conference center for Black African Art and Civilization. The lecture series was uh, limited by the, the center of to employ dialogue to engage some of the cultural and historical po and political issues that derail the path of progress and impede peace and, pro and process in Africa and Africa in diaspora. The minister of Nigeria and, and, on, and the minister of tourism was there and he spoke to the audience about, cult about how culture How culture can be used in aiding the nation quest for true democracy. His lecture titled Cultural Diplomacy in the Making of New Nigeria was a, a part given in his, in his pedigree as both the head of the head and the iconic cultural symbol for Nigeria in the United States. He explained that um, culture plays a vital role in the establishment of viable and sustainable diplomatic relations among nations. He further said that one of the ways which a country can sought to win friendship with other nations is by establishing and maintaining strengthening cultural links between both nations. He also pointed out that culture in its dimension is a fundamental component for sustainable development and has an important role in maintaining and sustaining our country in the path of progress. And the minister assured um, Nigeria that the federal government would include Nigerian culture studies in schools, curricula, and in stressing that he gave priority to the incubation and development of technology that can assist the process of using culture to remark the country. So this conference was, um, was like last year, and now they have implemented the the language schools in all, Niger in all part of Nigeria, as I'm talking now, and uh, in, now the, in summer, the, when the school is closed, they also make uh, uh, um, uh, classes for private uh, citizens that are they are working apart from students to come and learn the language. And so many people turn 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 out. Uh, you know, many people want to learn languages, especially Nigerian languages, to be able to understand no better, but there are limited facilities, limited um, places to do. So those things were not in place, but now that they're in place, so many people are, are turning up. So it's a good thing. It's now it's not about talking, it's about the implementation. When you start, when you talk and you not implement, it, it doesn't solve the problem. So that's what the institute is trying to do. And the institute, And the institute, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the institute, um, apart from language, you know, Nigeria is have is uh, now past, at present we have um, uh, Boko Haram problem, and in Nigeria, it's a uh, uh, militant uh, uh, militant group. Uh, at first, they, they started killing uh, Muslims, bombing mosques. Well, after a while, they continued bombing Christian uh, churches and the rest because. They, want, they wanted the, the country to, to implement a Sharia law, which the country, the country doesn't want. So because of this, this unrest, especially in the northern parts. So violence is a common feature in the social life in all parts of um, society. The scale, trend to, uh, and pattern of violence vary across society and period. Frequently, the violence, both local and international, has demonstrated a lot of destruction in human civilization. Violence has, in a small degree, incapacitated, incapacitated advancement in developing countries, especially Africa. And even in the developed countries, the occurrence of violence has continued to be occurring tales and thus pose a need for collaborative effort in combating the threats. Most of the social group and, and religious believers in Nigeria 
consequences are influenced by the act of violence, which has um, affected the behavioral pattern and continued to draw the attention of various government. Volunteer agency, religious organization, and academia towards controlling the range of its uh, resolution. Nigerian condition present a, a good case for examining the complex pattern uh, of persistent violent action. And um, Islam and Christianity uh, are the pitch to be the major re uh, relying um, um, force in escalating the scale of violence and action in Nigeria because Muslims we, in Nigeria, um, the Muslim and Christian, they are together, but because the country is divided into, I would say, into two, the north is predominated by the Muslims and the south and uh, the middle from the south is more Christian. So because of this, there's no integration and uh, lack of language barriers and uh, more ethnic problems. So uh, the country is, um, is not stable uh, where the Muslim wants something else, the Christian don't want this. And every time uh, crisis and violence erupts. So this has been going on for so many years. Uh, uh, the, uh, Nigeria, you know, has, it has a very long history uh, of this um, of violence, and uh, the, there are two ethnic uh, regions conflict that claim so many lives uh, in, in property in Nigeria. That which is sometimes Christian and Muslim. That is the only. If Christian, there are peace. Maybe a small group of uh, militant group of ethnic fighting one another because of property, because of land. So this, every year, it happens like that. So um, uh, the brief, I will give you the a brief, um, it, the, the violence that occurred in Nigeria between um, 2005, I would say, uh, or back, let me just take it back in, in, in the 80s. In the 80s, there was religious disturbance in, in, in Zamfara, that is the northern part, about Christian and Muslim, and also in, in, the, in, the, in the university, which one of the universities in Nigeria in 1982. And from 1981, that is from 1981 to 1985, there, also, there was also a conflict between Christian and Muslim riots. And also uh, in the in 19, uh, in the same year, also there was when one crisis start, continue another one continue because when a, Christ, a, Mus, a Christian kill a Muslim or a Muslim kills a Christian, it doesn't. Sorry, it's continuous. It doesn't. It doesn't stop there. They want to re retaliate. They want to revenge. So it continues. And the felon and the felonies, and uh, they are. Cattle realists. So they have a lot of cattle, and most of them are in the north. So when, because the north is most of the uh, savanna is more dry and it's more desert. So when in the rainy season, when when it's dry, then they bring their cattle downward. So when the, their cattle enter someone a local person's farm and destroy, then the other tribe react. Uh, try to you know kill the cows or do something when they start that, and the fight continues and this continue year after year, and they kill mess messlessly. So, and in two thousand and in two thousand and one, two thousand one yeah nine eleven yeah. Nine eleven nine eleven was two thousand one yes. Yeah, so uh, that year. Um, there was a crisis in Jaws, which started the crisis in, in the middle part of Nigeria. We started in 2001. I, I was taking my cousin to the school then in his first year, and I just left the city in the afternoon, no, in the morning, and the crisis started in the afternoon. Like after one hour, I left. It started killing because it was on Friday. So the uh, the Christ, there was a big mocks, the central mocks. So the there were so many people, 
uh, Muslim praying, and the, 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 there were so many people that the mosque could not contain. So they closed the roads, and other old, uh, people were on the road praying. And there was this girl that wore uh, clothes. She wore a mini skirt, very uh, revealing body uh, wears. So she was passing with doing uh, their prayers, and they don't like it. That is, in Muslim culture, they don't like that. So they started beating her up, and they beat her and beat her to death. So and um, the Christian they don't like it, and they broke, the fight broke up, and they started fighting and started killing people that afternoon, and it was terrible. They killed so many people, and that's how it, it led to one fight, one problem to another, and they killed a lot of people. So it happens year after year. The military came in, the government interceded, and the fight sub, uh, subsided. And the Fulanis, which were in the north, because they killed their um, brothers in the middle, so they were, no, they were not happy, and they would not stop. So they came, uh, there was one, one night, they, one particular uh, village, they came at night and slaughtered the whole village at night. So, um, and during that time, the, it was very terrible, and the, gov the gov uh, governor, um, who was on, on seat then, um, according to what we, 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 we heard, he was angry, but so he left the country. He was left to the U to UK, but when he, he when he left, and um, another group went to a Muslim village. That is, their, their own, they want revenge. They took machine guns and had big weapons, and they went and they leveled the whole village. You know, it was very horrible, and they killed everybody, children, and so this conflict is when it starts. It doesn't stop easily. It goes from one, it leads from one problem to another because he killed my child or the, the, the child saw they killed his father. He will never stop. So how can we um, make the youth? Because most, Niger most youth in the north, do, they don't go to school. And they stop at, when you go to the, in the north, northern part of Nigeria, is there are a lot of youth. Now I think Nigerian Muslim, uh, Nigerians Muslim are more than the Christian population. So because the, in Nigeria the, we have a mixed um, marriage, you can, you can marry one, more than one wife. As a Muslim, you're entitled to marry four wives. So because of this, they are, they, that's why their population is increasing very massive in Africa. So um, I think we don't have, I have less time, so let me, Hurry up. So how would this, uh, because of the, oh, because of the, there's a lot of stereotype. We don't uh, try to come uh, to, uh, in terms of one another. So when this, uh, the, when this outbreak, there's, uh, there's a more anger because the army there, the Nigerian army, they don't. And in the news, you hear different different things. But when you go there, you see different things. When the fight starts, because if you don't witness these things yourself, because they don't even show it on the, they will show if they kill somebody. If the fight starts in Nigeria, they kill more than 200 people, but they will report they kill maybe 20 or 50. But if you go there, they kill more than 300 or more. So the government itself, they don't report this very well. And when they send army to subside the crisis, the army kills. They give the order to kill anybody that want to bring unrest. So sometimes the, the soldiers, I have a friend who is an who is a, a army person, a army, he's in the army, and he, he once told me the, his commander, the, you know, they give them money to, to go to, you know, because he, they posted him for Boko Haram, uh, 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 where the Boko Haram is at, at the region where Boko Haram was disturbing, and by then there was no, there was peace, a little bit peace. But when some of the politicians want to have money, because when there's a fight, the government give a lot of money 
for this for the, for them to tackle this crisis. But when there's no crisis, they will, the money will not come forth. So his commander now sent them sent them to the north to just go and investigate and give their commander they should kill anybody. So they went to each house and they killed. They killed the father and they will leave the son. They will, they will kill the whole father and mother if they just kill the men. And he said it was terrible, but they gave them the order to kill, so they killed. And they put it on the news that Boko Haram did. Sometimes Boko Haram doesn't do this. They decide to kill so that they make money out of this. So how, how can we tackle these problems? So, but in, 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 in Jos, the central part, where there were more crises, crisis, they organized um, a seminar to integrate the Nigerian youths to try to know each other, to understand each other. For me personally, I have this stereotype too. When I'm in Nigeria, I can say, I, I'll not go to the north, northern part because I am scared. I believe they will kill or they are, they are not good people. But that is the stereotype we have. So in Africa in particular, this is not only Nigeria, this is all Africa. This stereotype, we don't trust each other. While if we don't trust each other, even the Western um, world come and give us funds to do something, if we do not trust each other, how can we manage these funds? You know, how can we manage to, to move forward if we do not integrate, we do not try to learn our cultures, we don't try to you know, tolerate a Muslim person? If a Muslim person does not tolerate a Christian, yes, if you're a Muslim um, uh, and I'm not a Muslim, you cannot force me to, to live your, your, your life or to live in your own religious beliefs. But if, uh, the, uh, if when the time comes to you know to integrate, that's what the uh, the um, the institute does. They try to bring youths together, and they have they have a school which teach uh, which orientate youths and teach diplomats how to talk with youths, how to organize seminar to you know talk and integrate Nigerians, so that um, the integration when a, a, a country is integrated better and uh, you know, advancement comes out of it. So I don't have a lot of time to talk much. So this is what the Institute is doing right now. And because of this, you know, they, they talk about cultural things. Not only in Nigeria, they do it, but they also have programs that integrate uh, um, countries in diaspora. And, and the, uh, the government right now, uh, because the Minister of Culture, which is the head of the Institute, uh, talk to the president and give him um, the light of to implement most of this cultural thing. That is why the president um, prom, um, um, pledged uh, uh, um, two, million, two, um, two billion dollars for the film industry in Nigeria to promote Nigeria, uh, Nigerian film industry, to show Nigerian different face because the world did not see, in, the world always see Nigeria in a very bad image and this also reflects in Nigerian movies. So the government now is trying to change that image to give uh, to uh, to you know um, support the film industry, so that they will produce a better movies and uh, change show better stories about Africa, because it's, it's well you know for me it's tiring of hearing bad and bad news in Africa. This also our this a lot of bad things there, but it's a lot of changes too, and these changes are being made, but. We're not looking at the changes they're making. We always look at the bad. So this uh, drove me to, you know, um, to look at the good part, the changes that the institutes are making. So I'll stop from here. So if anybody have any questions.